In this one, I want to go over some of the more common diseases associated with the biliary tree, specifically associated with gallstones. The four that I will cover briefly are cholelithiasis, cholecystitis, choledocolithiasis, and cholangitis. I'm not going to lie, these all sounded like the same thing when I first started learning about them, so I'm hoping to help you understand and differentiate between the four of them better than I did at the beginning. The key things I want all of you to pay attention to as we go along are the anatomical positions of the stone, the presence or absence of infection, and the physical symptoms and pneumonics often associated with each one. Before we start, let's quickly go over the biliary anatomy as this will be important. So this thing right here is the liver, and that's what produces bile. The bowel then travels through both the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct towards the gallbladder and small bowels. Those two ducts then join to create the common hepatic duct. Over here, we see that we have the gallbladder, which is connected to the cystic duct. The cystic duct and the common hepatic duct join together to form the common bile duct, which joins with the pancreatic duct to empty into the small bowels. Now that we've reviewed the biliary anatomy, let's get to the main course, starting with cholelithiasis. Cholelithiasis is pretty much what it sounds like. It means that you have stones, or lithiasis, in your gallbladder, coli. However, while you do have stones in your gallbladders, the stones might occasionally block or obstruct the cystic duct, causing symptoms. Important thing to remember is that there is no active infection with cholelithiasis. I repeat, there is no infection. The physical symptoms associated with cholelithiasis often include right upper quadrant abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting that goes away with time, and these symptoms usually present after a fatty meal. The reason for this is because a fatty meal stimulates the gallbladder to contract. And when it does, the stones can obstruct the cystic duct, leading to symptoms. A positive Murphy sign is also a good indication for cholelithiasis. And remember that this is when a patient experiences pain while taking a deep breath when you apply pressure to the abdominal right upper quadrant. Something you hear a lot are the four Fs as risk factors for cholelithiasis. And these stand for female, fat, 40, and fertile. While this is a good way for you to remember this, please don't share this with your patient. I don't think they'll be too happy with being called these four things. Next up is cholecystitis, which is really just a progression of cholelithiasis, meaning it's exactly the same thing as cholelithiasis, except that now there is an active infection. And etitis in the name is what tells you that. I repeat, there is an active infection with cholecystitis. Everything else is pretty much the same as with cholelithiasis. So the anatomical position of the stone is again in the gallbladder obstructing the cystic duct. How the infection gets there? Eh, stuff happens and it gets there. The symptoms you would see are mostly the same as with cholelithiasis. So right upper quadrant abdominal pain, especially after fatty foods, nausea, and vomiting, except that you might also see signs of infection such as fever or an elevated white blood count. The four Fs that are risk factors for cholelithiasis also apply to cholecystitis. Next up is cholelithiasis, which pretty much means that there's a stone, lithiasis, stuck in a common bile duct, cholelithiasis. Similar to cholelithiasis, there is no active infection with cholelithiasis. The presentation for this is very variable as patients can either be completely asymptomatic or present with symptoms such as right upper quadrant abdominal pain, epigastric pain, or positive Murphy sign. Other signs of cholelithiasis that might be present but aren't usually seen with cholelithiasis include jaundice, clay-colored stools, 
and signs of liver damage such as elevated AST, ALT, ALP, or bilirubin. An easy way to remember all of this is that these symptoms have to do with a stone blocking the common bile duct. In doing so, the bile can back up into the liver, causing liver damage. It can also get into the blood from there. The elevated ALT level is a pretty good sign of damage to the common bile duct. Lastly, the clay colored stools are because stool normally gets its color from bile. So if the bile is blocked from getting into the intestines, then your stools will have decreased coloration. The last one we'll talk about is cholangitis, which is really just a progression of infection on top of cholidogolophysis. So there's a stone obstructing a common bile duct and an infection is brewing around that area. The presentation for cholangitis is usually described by either Charcot's triad or Reynolds pentad. Charcot's triad is right upper quadrant abdominal pain, jaundice, and fever while Reynolds' pentad is Charcot's triad plus signs of septic shock and mental confusion. The thing to remember about cholangitis is that it's a medical emergency. And antibiotics as well as biliary drainage need to be initiated. And that's it. So what I've done is I've compiled uh, everything that we talked about into this simple table that you can use to look at. Thanks for watching.